Well, hello and welcome to the Mindset Mentor. I'm your host, Tanya Kolar. And I hope you're having a phenomenal day today. And you could probably use a little bit more joy, a little bit more happiness, because really at the end of the day, I think that that's what we all want. That's a beautiful goal to have. But sometimes it's hard to really figure out what's going to make you happy. What's going to make you more joyful? Well, you definitely want to stay tuned for this hour because my special guest is joining me in this hour is going to help us tap into our inner joy, tap into that happiness that, that resides within, within all of us. And she's going to share some secret tips on, you know, how to open the door to happiness. Doesn't that sound amazing? Well, it certainly does. And especially at this time, I think the world is in, you know, a major shakeup. Um, there's a tendency to, or a, a Definitely um, the temptation, I would say, to, to fall into a negative pattern, you know, being inundated with negative news, um, you know, and just, just the global climate right now. So we want to really give our mindset a good workout. And so remember that your mindset is like a muscle that needs to be strengthened and conditioned. This, my friends, is your mindset workout. So I'm going to just jump in and say hello to Paula Vale. It is such a pleasure to have you here, Paula. Paula is an author. She is a Reiki master. She is a teacher. She is an author. Um, in fact, she has written a book called why am I so happy? What a great question. <laughs> and we're going to, we're going to find the answer to that question. Uh, she's also a co-author of America's leading ladies who positively impact the world. I mean, that's a, such a wonderful, um, uh, you know, distinction, of course, to, to be included into a book alongside women like Oprah Winfrey and Melinda Gates. Uh, Paula, it is truly an absolute honor to have you joining us here today on the Mindset Mentor. Oh, thank you so much. And I have to say, I am truly honored it's, to be your guest. It, it's, I really am grateful for that privilege. And I love that we're going to have a mindset workout. That is so fantastic. You got it. We are ready and we can't wait to learn your secret tips and tools and you know, the practices that you yourself have put into place uh, in your own life. Um, so I want to start, you know, talking about, first of all, the definition. So what is your definition of joy, of happiness? I think we're all on that sort of pursuit we know we want more of it but what is it and sometimes it's elusive and it's it's um you know not hard to or it's hard to come by sometimes right or so we think it is and it really isn't um i don't believe but let's talk about you know what your definition is and what that looks like mm. well i i wrote a quote that's that's on my book and it's the sign of true success is a happy heart so I would say a happy heart, and but I would say happiness, it isn't one thing. It is a variety of things in our lives. And in my book, I share different tools, different um, perceptions that I've made in life. And it's really just a variety of things. And I can share a few of those with you. And it, what triggered me to write the book is my whole life, I've just been grateful for life. I was born a premature baby, less than three pounds, not mm. supposed to survive the night. Danger, yes. Oh my goodness. So mm. I really felt I was meant to be here and I'm going to appreciate that. So I would say one of the main things that I really strive for is gratitude. And I think gratitude is one of those pieces, one of those many pieces. And what triggered me to write the book also is my whole life, I, you know, loved smiling at someone and sharing a compliment or helping someone with it. And I've had people say, well, why are you so happy? And, you know, it's just, I've made that choice. And then as I grew older and sometimes I would share with people challenges I've had in my life. I've had some very difficult challenges. 
Okay, well, I, I'm really glad actually that you mentioned that because when people see someone who is so happy and ecstatic and joyful, they think, well, life is perfect and they don't have any yes. problems and they don't have challenges. But, you know, I'm so glad you talked about that because you are a happy person, but of course you're human and you've had your challenges. Yes. And, you know, that is such a statement to make because they do assume that. They think, oh, well, you've evidently had an easy life and, and no no heartaches. And then I can share some of the things and they're like, oh my, well, why are you happy? <laughs> and and yeah. that made me realize I'm going to put this down in a book. And so for about two years, I just made notes. I, but, you know, a few of the examples was I was bullied in school when I was in junior high. There was one year I didn't even take my coat off. I was made fun of and laughed at. I was very thin, very shy. And you know what? One day I said, love me or don't. I'm just going to be me. And that set me free. Wow. It did. And did you start to take the coat off? Yeah. And I took the coat off. Yes. And, you know, it, it just changed everything when I realized I'm not what everyone thinks of me. I'm what I think of myself. Mm. So here's another one of our little, you know, tools for being happy is it's not what others think of you and how much others love you. It's how much you love you mm. and knowing that you are powerful love and that you are someone who doesn't need to be perfect. We don't need to be perfect. We're unique and we can celebrate that. I, I've had people read the book who have, you know, teenage daughters going through being bullied and said how much that's helped them. I, for many years, I, I was an entrepreneur. I started working in a restaurant in college. Then I managed it and I bought it 27 years. Well done. Um, mm -hmm. I love taking care of my customers and enjoyed all of that. But during this time, I was married, a mom of three kids. Life was great. My husband loved his job. Everything was great. We would bought property, built a house, and then his uh, illness, his Crohn's acted up. And he had two very painful surgeries. He became addicted to the pain pills. Mm. He added alcohol. He got very depressed. He became a different person. So then I was a mother, not knowing what to do, how to help. I didn't know Reiki then. I wish I had, but had to also protect my children. But anyway, it, it finally took the best of him and he passed away at 34. Wow. So young. So, and, you know, not, yes. not uncommon when you hear uh, people going through an illness to become addicted to uh, pain medication and things can quickly downward spiral. Um, so, you know, I want to thank you for sharing your story and being vulnerable um, because I think somebody listening can really start to, to take comfort in the fact that they're not alone. They're yeah. not the only person going through those challenges. And I think that that can help us be happier. Just knowing that, you know, we're all in this together in a sense. We all have our challenges and they can look like many different things, of course. But, um, you know, it is important to just know that at the end of the day, we, we are all human and we will have those experiences that are not wonderful. Um, but to be able to move past them is so essential. And so now to go back, you find yourself now uh, in a situation where, you know, um, now a, a young mom taking care of your three kids, without a spouse and mm -hmm. so what what was going through through your mind and the process for you at that time it was you know it's a whole new world now life is different mm -hmm. i'll move on but priority is my children and they will always know how much i love them and and i had to you know i battled with being very angry and upset with the world. Why did this happen? To realizing, I'm so grateful I had him in my life. Mm. I'm so grateful I had him in my life. When we lose someone, when we lose someone special to us, 
it really opens our eyes to how lucky, how blessed we were when we had them in our lives. And I'll never forget, I, ha I have to share my oldest son, when he went to college, he then got a scholarship for graduate school. He, he was the only one in his Good for class. him. But Congratulations. I, yeah, yeah. Well done. I was so proud of him, but I was just like, how, how, you know, with all that we've been through and seen, and we were sitting in the restaurant after he graduated and was going to be moving on to graduate school. And I said, honey, I just, I'm so proud of you. How, I, you know, with all that we went through and he said, mom, we always knew we, you loved us. We always knew how much we were loved. Even though I battled with, I had to work all these long hours. You know, I miss sports events. I miss things. But they knew how much I loved them. But they could come to work with me and hang out and order <laughs> off the menu. And <laughs> all, well, that's you know, a treat, yeah. Restaurant. So mm. we made it a family endeavor. But mm. it, it shows... Things can be so unperfect, but the love can be there and the love can be felt. And I think when we go through the challenges or tragedies, going back to that love, feeling it, and it could be feeling the love of someone we've lost or feeling the love of those who are still around us. I believe that's a huge step in getting back to a uh, happiness again. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, that's the, it's the perfect uh, choice of words, you know, getting back to happiness again, because it's always there, isn't it? But sometimes it's like through the layers of life, you know, it gets blocked and hidden. Uh, and then we need yeah. to peel back those layers to, to really find and discover that again. Um, and, you know, everybody has the ability to tap into that happiness. And we do have to choose, you know, to move forward in those moments that are not pleasant and that are hurtful and painful. Um, and so if we can continue to just move, keep moving, I think it's so important. Um, and I, and I just, I love that example. I love that, um, you know, through your process, uh, certainly a great role model to your children and really highlighting that, that love is so important. And, uh, again, you don't have to be there. Uh, I think a lot of parents struggle with the guilt of having to miss certain games and different events and maybe not spending enough time because they are working and, you know, multitasking and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of guilt, I think, involved in that. But at the heart of it, if your children know 100% that you love them, that's going to make up for those moments that you're not there because you're always there with heart, uh, with passion, you know, whether you're present or not. So I really, I love that experience and that example. Um, and, you know, that's something that, that the world, I think, needs more of is just to show that love to everyone. Um, um, and so let's talk a little bit about uh, your your upbringing. Um, so you know you you were explaining how you were um, uh, pre born premature, only three pounds. Certainly, very dangerous situation, uh, life threatening. Obviously, uh, you survived the unexpected. You weren't expected to you know survive you know throughout the night, um, but certainly you did. So I want to talk about your your childhood. Were, were you brought up in a home you know filled with love and filled with happiness, or or not? Because I find again you know there's so many people that think well you know they had a perfect childhood, a perfect life. They don't have these problems. So clearly you've had many challenges in life. Um, and, and what did your childhood look like? Oh, well, actually it was, it was kind of both spectrums. Um, it was far from perfect and there were difficulties. Um, and my parents got divorced and when that happened, um, my mom kicked me out and my brothers. So it was, um, you know, my dad was always a strong hand. And then a dear aunt and uncle, Auntie Jackie and Uncle Ernie were always there for me. So for a while I went and lived with them. So there was, 
it was far from perfect because it there wasn't a happiness with the, with my parents. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think that was one of the reasons I was so shy in school and 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 things. But because I did, you know, but my attitude was I love my parents. I love my brothers. None are perfect. And, you know, my parents are the reason I'm here and I'm going to remember that. Mm -hmm. And especially when you, you have a parent that you feel like you're not loved, you have to realize there's a reason for how they are to their children. There's a reason how they are. So there, there may be some hurt on their end. Mm -hmm. And so instead of being angry and feeling neglected, I decided to just love and find the joy where I could find the joy. Beautiful. So beautiful. Finding that compassion. Uh, Cause you're absolutely right. Uh, You know, we can only, um, well, many parents and, you know, only, only do the best that they know how to, uh, it may not always feel like the best, but if they don't know any different, you know, it's a learning process, you know, it's, 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 it's a lifelong journey of figuring things out. Um, and I, again, I like the fact that, um, uh, even though you maybe well had maybe let's say one parent that maybe you didn't feel that, that particular connection to, or, or felt that they loved you, um, you still were able to give that to your children. So I think that is so important is that it really highlights the moments in life that we get to choose because every moment is a choice. And so to choose happiness, to choose love over feeling, uh, you know, judgmental or, you know, hatred towards someone I think is, is, is truly um, a remarkable thing. And it may not always be easy to do that. Right. But it's certainly worth the effort and taking the action. So we're going to take a, a short break here on the Mindset Mentor. And we're going to be back with more Paula Vale helping us to discover that inner joy and the inner happiness that resides within, because we certainly know we could use more joy and more love in the world, particularly at this time. Stay with us and we'll be back. And welcome back to The Mindset Mentor. You're listening to Saga 960 AM. On today's show, we're discussing how to tap into inner joy and inner happiness. You know, really, those are quality essentials that will help you live a more fulfilled life. So, you know, it's so important to know how to get more happiness and joy into our day. And my special guest, Paula Vale, joining us today. Paula is a Reiki master. She is a teacher. She is an author. Um, uh, and, you know, really helping to spread the message of joy, uh, and happiness throughout the world. I know you have a big mission and a big purpose in life, Paula, you know, helping to make the world a better place. And certainly that starts with love. Yes. Yes, it really does. It really does. So your book, um, why am I so happy? You know, such an interesting question. I think it's a question that others will ask and say, well, why is that person so happy? Why are you so happy? But it's also a question that we can ask ourselves. Well, why, why am I so happy? Because if you know what you're doing, we can do more of it when it's working for us. (laughs) So let's talk a little bit more and delve into the, the question of, you know, why am I so happy? And what can we say to ourselves in order to get a little bit more of that happiness? and uh, joy into our day? Well, there's, you know, there's so many aspects and I'll say habits that we can form in our lives, attitudes we can form in our lives that are going to increase our our happiness. One thing I, I have a lot of fun with is, you know, we all have happiness triggers. We do. We all have our own happiness triggers. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, example, it's, you know, listening to my favorite music or, um, you know, sharing a smile with someone or opening that, holding the door for someone or any little thing, but it could be reading, it can be gardening, it can, it can be making banana bread, mm-hmm. it can be coloring a picture. We all have our own happiness triggers. So something I, I, I love to share 
when I mentor with students and we discuss, you know, happiness and such is do more of your happiness triggers. Make it a habit to pull those, give those things to yourself. Give you yourself a few minutes if, if you love music, if you have your favorite music. Give yourself a few minutes every day to listen to your music. If you're someone that, that loves a, a warm bath, give yourself the baths. If you're someone that loves, you know, drawing a picture or, you know, doing the things I already discussed, do those for you. Take the time to do those for you. So really, when we take the time every day to do one of the things in life that makes us feel good, even if it's watching the sunset every night, those little things, give yourself gifts. And that's going to increase your happiness because you're pulling that into your day. And another important thing to remember is we are only in this moment. We are not in yesterday. We are not in tomorrow. When we are always focused, our words, our actions, our thoughts on, okay, this is what I have to get done. This needs to be, this will happen, man. That's, you know, we do want to plan ahead and think of our future, but we are in the moment. And in the moment is where we're going to be happy. Oh, I love that. You're That's so good in the happy. moment. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. I love it. I love it. And I think, um, you know, it, it's so important, as you say, to, 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 you know, get into the habit, right? Do something nice for yourself. Schedule it. You know, put it in your phone. Put a reminder on your phone and say, oh, it's time for me to do something nice for myself. Yes. Um, and I think it's important to, to give ourselves permission to, to feel good um, and to do those nice things for ourselves, even when our day is not so great. So what, what is your thought about that, where you have a day um, that is really, let's say, going downhill? Uh, something's happened. Uh, it's not the best day. I think people find it hard to give themselves permission to be happy when everything is not ideal in their, in their day. What do you think about that? I, uh, I would say it's always beneficial to take a moment to sit back and just breathe. Get yourself relaxed, <sighs> take those long deep breaths mm -hmm. right there. So there's a step because life can be so chaotic and things can be going on around us or there may be something that's happened that's just devastated us or, mm -hmm. you know, we're depressed. Take a few moments to just breathe. That right there is going to make a difference on our temperament. And then look at what is upsetting you. And look at it and think, say to yourself, what can I do lovingly and with compassion for this situation and think about what you can do or make steps and there may be nothing you can do and if that's the case you realize that you realize what you can do you realize what you can't do and you do this with love and compassion and then you let it go mm. like just put it in the river because every day we are flowing in that river. We, we are in this beautiful, loving, I call it the manifestation river. Oh, okay. It's what we manifest in our mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. It's where we put our thoughts, our actions, um, where we put our visions, the visions of what we want to see. And imagine yourself just laying in this warm, wonderful river, feeling what your vision is and what your passion is and feel it is already done. Mm. Say yes and accept it. So when you let go of what you can't control and you know you, you can do what you can do and then put yourself in what you want to see come up 
ahead, what you want in your future, what your goal is, and say yes to that and envision it and then trust that. And that can just change everything because you go from, oh my gosh, I'm to, wow, you know what? Well, I think I'm excited because these changes are going to happen. I'm going to put forth in my life this effort and these words and these actions to bring me to where this is. And also, I say yes to manifestation and positive outcomes in my life that I don't even realize are coming. Mm -hmm. And just, and you can totally turn around the energy level of negative and angry to grateful for what you have, to inspired for what can become and inspired for, you know, what may come that you may not even realize is coming, you know, just yeah. say yes. I love that to have that trust and faith yeah. that things will unfold um, out in, in a in a better way for you in in a moment that maybe you're not enjoying. Right, things will get better. Life is always a cycle, and I think it is important to have that um, you know that that um, emotion, uh, the visualization of you know what it is that you want. It totally completely changes the physiology and the body. Right, when yeah. we can start to focus on what it is we want and those beautiful desires, and uh, we we all have have those desires. And, um, you know, we always, I think, uh, you know, should try to strive to look at what we want versus what we don't want, right? Because, you know, we're, where we focus, that's, that's, uh, you know, the direction that we're going to be headed into, right? So, Again, yes. there, it comes down to having the choice and giving yourself permission, right, to, to be happy and to, to move past that, that unhappy situation, let's say. And I love that you call it happiness triggers, right? Because we all know, we all know, Paula, that we have triggers, the emotional triggers. When someone yeah. upsets us, boy, we are triggered. <laughs> they know how to push our buttons, <laughs> right? And we just, we fly off the handle. We're totally, you know, activated emotionally. Um, and so I love the idea of a happiness trigger. So exactly like being triggered uh, negatively, we can be triggered and trigger ourselves even more importantly, because that now gives us power and power is such yes. a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know, power, that's, that's perfect description because we do have the power. We have the power of what we're going to envision and what we're going to accept and what we're going to say yes to. And it really helps also to realize that whatever's going on now, tomorrow's a new day. Tomorrow's a new day. Mm -hmm. And we can have those visions and we can have our positive aspirations because tomorrow, whatever it is going on, it is, it is temporary because every day is temporary. We move on to a new day. Yeah, it's, I think it's a good uh, reminder for ourselves, right, to just to recognize that and to be mindful of that. And as you say, to take a breath, take a breath in those moments, uh, just relax, regroup, and then again, continue to move forward to the next day and to the next emotions and feelings and, and what have you. So I love that. Um, I also would love to talk about your book with your, that you co-authored, uh, America's Leading Ladies, Who Positively Impact the World. Uh, what an honor for you to be included, um, you know, amongst women like Oprah Winfrey and Melinda Gates and, and many others. Um, so I want to talk about your experience with that and, um, you know, how, how you felt contributing to the world um, and being recognized as a woman of distinction who has impacted the world. It, it was, it was really a surprise. I, you know, knew nothing about it. And here's an example of what may come that you didn't even realize was out there. I received a phone call of the editor, the woman putting the book together, and she mm -hmm. had one spot left. And she said, someone had sent her an email about me. <laughs> and she looked at my website and researched me a little bit and said, would you be interested in writing a 
piece for this book. I mean, you just never know what's going to happen. And to be with that group of women uh, to share some positivity was was truly amazing and, and really a gift. And it, it was something that I did not even expect. Wow. And I think that really highlights the importance of maintaining a positive attitude, you know, being joyful, having that happiness so that more joyful things and happy, happy experiences come to you, um, see unexpectedly. So I think that's really important. It's part of the manifestation process, right? Um, and maybe things will not come in exactly the same shape or form that you were thinking, but something positive, uh, you know, will sort of enter your world when you can maintain those feelings of positivity. Uh, So beautiful. Congratulations for that. I know you've won multiple awards for the work that you do um, and have done not only in business, but of course, in life. And um, you have your your um, online business uh, wellness inspired. Did I get that correctly? wellnessinspired.com. And and let's talk a little bit more about that. And and also your Reiki uh, healing. Um, Because I think Reiki is such an incredibly powerful tool to unravel some of the, the, you know, deep emotions trapped in the body that can prohibit us from being fully happy. So when you what, what sort of led you and guided you into becoming a Reiki healer and now a Reiki master? I would love to share that. I am going to share quickly, though, with everyone. I have another book coming out. Wonderful. In the next few weeks. And it is a Reiki training manual for all the Reiki teachers out there. It's a level one and two. And I'm really excited. I co-authored with one of my students. Wonderful. I, I'm very passionate about Reiki. And I, I got into Reiki for this girl right here. Her name was Shotzi, Mm -hmm. a beloved dog, and she was about 14. She had a tumor, uh, had a surgery. She wasn't doing well. And someone said to me, you should learn Reiki. Mm -hmm. This was about 14 years ago. And I didn't know what Reiki was. I researched it a little bit. And then I took trainings. Um, I'm also shaman trained as well. My shaman name is Shantara. But I learned it for her and she improved so much. I had her two more years. Oh, beautiful. And I fell in love with Reiki and it just bloomed from there. And oh my gosh, over the years, what I've seen with Reiki has just been absolutely amazing. I love it. And I have clients... You know, and I, I've given Reiki to the deer. And had wow. Them I've given Reiki to giraffes in Africa and had a giraffe follow me on a safari. I mean, oh. I mean I, animals love it. But uh, I have clients that will bring their pets and I'll give them Reiki. I'll give their dog Reiki or their cat. I had someone bring me, bring a chicken. I've had uh, people bring, you know, injured pets, but, and, and just Reiki, I've, over the years, I've kind of said, it's beyond words. It does Mm. so much in so many areas. And as a practitioner, when you offer Reiki to someone, you receive that healing as well. You receive that, you know, that positive energy is going through you. We're not the Reiki. It's coming Mm. through us. Mm-hmm. and we feel so good and what I've seen over the years. And so it's, I'm real excited about our Reiki training manual that's coming out, but it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's fantastic. Really uh, so when is the book coming out and where will it be available? We are just finishing it up probably mm-hmm. a couple more weeks and then it's going to be published. I have a publishing company for self-publishing. If anyone's looking to self-publish a book and my executive, oh my gosh, he's so amazing. And it's yours. It's set up, but we're going to be uh, publishing in just a few weeks. So we're hoping to have it out later next month, but we've been working on it for about a year now. And it is, 
it's like no other manual. It's amazing. And I, I personally with Reiki am very uh, passionate about uh, history and authentic Yusui Reiki and integrity and honor and, and trust. And oh my gosh, and just, it's amazing. And it's so fun because Reiki you know, there's the, oh, it's just woo-woo, it's our energy field, but it's actually very scientifically backed. There is a lot of scientifics. And actually, our energy field, our luminous energy field, tells our DNA what to do. Wow, okay. And Reiki yes. works with our energy field. And oh my gosh, the things that I have seen over the years uh, with clients, it's amazing. Okay, so I'd love to talk a little bit more about some of those experiences that you have seen. We're going to take a break uh, and we're going to be back here um, on Saga 960 with the Mindset Mentor. I'm Tanya Kolar and you are listening to Paula Vale. Paula is a Reiki master. She is a teacher. She is an author, uh, multiple author. Next book coming out soon on Reiki training um, and her book um, is Why Am I So Happy? What a great question. Um, and of course, uh, we're going to be back here um, on Saga 960 AM after this break. Stay tuned. Well, hello and welcome back to the Mindset Mentor. I'm Tanya Kolar. Uh, to my guest today is the lovely Paula Vale, who is a Reiki master. She is a teacher. She's an author. She's also a radio host. I mean, she's a multitasker. She's an entrepreneur, uh, a woman of many, many hats. Uh, her book, Why Am I So Happy, is available. Uh, you can check out more um, about Paula at her website at wellnessinspired.com. Lots of information there. She has another book coming out on Reiki training. So I want to uh, just jump back in the conversation to before we took a break, Paula, we were talking, you know, about your, your Reiki, uh, you know, practice and, and working with some of your uh, patients and the experiences that you had. So I'd love to talk about that um, and maybe help inspire people to, um, you know, try Reiki if they haven't tried it for the first <laughs> time or really to get maybe a, just a better understanding of what what Reiki is. Yes, yes. Yeah, Reiki is is absolutely amazing. It it was just life-changing for me. I've seen it life-changing for my students. Um, and long distance Reiki is something that's very powerful. Mm -hmm. You can I send Reiki to people around the world. Really? So remotely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I sent Reiki. I was given her name by a, a family member to someone in uh, Australia who was very ill and she's doing great. And she actually flew from Australia to take a class from me. Wow. Okay. And that's powerful. Morning, it shows you. It, yeah. Yes. An email from a, a young lady in Switzerland who on my wellness inspired website, you can purchase long distance Reiki sessions. Mm. And she had done done one and then did a few more and is loving it. And I just got an email from her this morning, but I'll share a few little hands-on one um, sessions. Um, I, because I'll say, because this, this, she became a friend, this mother mm -hmm. just called me last week. She had come to me a few years ago. Her daughter, who was 19, was standing outside a restaurant in downtown Seattle, and there was a drive-by shooting, and she was shot in the back. Oh, dear. She was in a lot of pain. Her vision was blurry. And this woman contacted me and asked me if I would give her daughter Reiki. So her daughter started coming for Reiki, and a huge improvement. And her daughter just swears it brought her vision back. Wow. And I gifted the mother a Reiki class so that she could give her daughter Reiki as well. But mm. she just called me last week because she works in like human resources type work. And there's so much depression now and so much going on, people out of work, you know, due to the pandemic and such that she called to say she had ordered my book and loved it. And she said, Paula, I'm giving copies to people. And mm. oh my gosh, that just, and she said, my daughter still talks about you. <laughs> oh, what, so a, there's what an honor. One example of Reiki. Another, mm. I mean, I have so many, but I'll send another one was 
someone brought her husband in and it was so funny because he was like what are you doing to me you know say it to his wife and yeah. so like, he had lost his arm in a motorcycle accident mm. and he had the phantom pain and he just it just hurt so bad and his wife was like we gotta figure something else out and the reiki really really helped him Wow, that's I mean, fascinating. Yeah. So I, is it clearing um, up, uh, you know, energy blocks, releasing energy? What, yes. what essentially is happening? Basically, this Reiki energy is coming through and I almost kind of call it like a prayer modality also. And, you know, I, I'm very passionate that a practitioner, there's no ego. Yeah, mm. I mean, if someone says my Reiki is better than yours, I say run because yeah. it's not the Reiki. Mm. And it's kind of almost like a prayer, but the practitioner uh, connects with that. This energy comes through them, through their hands, their mouth, their eyes. This energy goes into the client, into every cell, every muscle, every tissue of their body. And it does. It, it removes blockages. It mm. goes where needed. You don't have to focus on this, this, this. The Reiki goes where needed. It wow. knows where to go. And you basically put them in this beautiful Reiki bubble. And this, this works on them even after they get up off the table. But I mean, you can, I've seen so many things, but it basically, I call it like pulling weeds out of the garden. <laughs> yes. It removes blockages. Yes, cleaning it helps out. with pain. Hmm. And, you know, because we don't know and, really what they need, but the Reiki does. Someone may say, I'm having a headache and we can just focus on the head, but you know what that headache may be because they're dehydrated. Mm, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so the, just let the Reiki go and let the Reiki flow, but my gosh, it's, it is amazing. And there is so many scientific facts and like one study, you know, what our, energy moves in cycles, you know, you can feel it when you do this, feel mm -hmm, the energy. Mm -hmm, they have a machine mm -hmm. that can test that. And they've tested when someone has their Reiki activated, okay, normally it's around a 200, 250 cycles per second, I think it is. And with people with their Reiki activated, they've tested as high as eight, 900 wow. cycles. Mm -hmm. So it's really, Years ago, I did really a lot of the scientific research. And then I've had in, in my classes, like a gentleman that total tech guy for, it wasn't Amazon, it was a, a company in Seattle and he learned Reiki and he was wow. And he total science guy. And we really had fun with the science. Of it. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, there's, yeah, it's fascinating, it's isn't fascinating. it? So, and also tapping into, um, you know, not just the physical, but the emotional and spiritual elements yes. as well. Right. So, cause you know, yes. a lot of, a lot of those physical uh, ailments oh, have an emotional. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. What it does for those going through trauma. And then it's huge for like rescue animals. I have four dogs, mm. rescue animals and what it does for them. But, you know, people going through trauma, I, I, I won't give examples of what some of those have been, but it's mm -hmm. really been helpful. Yeah, I think um, so many people carry a lot of extra weight, um, right, mm -hmm. um, in their bodies because of that, uh, the heavy burden that we have, and it takes a toll on us. Um, so it's so it's so important to do what we can to try to release some of that. And I love that you are doing it remotely, particularly since we are, you know, in this uh, COVID situation where we are not as mobile as we would like to be. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it is a great opportunity, I think, for someone to, to get access and to be able to, to get healing and to relieve some of that strain and, and emotional uh, burden, as well as the physical stress, um, you know, in, in all of that. Um, so we don't have too much time left, but before we go, I would really love to hear your story, Paula, of uh, how you started your restaurant, um, you know, what that process was like for you. Uh, again, a woman of many hats, everyone. Paula is, uh, you know, a Reiki master. She's a teacher. She's an author, multiple author, and also, of course, entrepreneur and restaurateur. Yes, yes. 
Well, here I was, I had worked in the restaurant all those years, Mm -hmm. managed it. And the owner always said when he retires, he would sell it to me. Mm -hmm. And he said, you just save this, this much. Okay. So I put the money away. And at this time I was in a single mom because of my husband passing. Mm -hmm. And it was that time he was going to retire. And I walk in the restaurant one day and, and, but you know, I'd worked all those hours because this is my future. And, mm. and I told my kids when we buy the restaurant, it's a family endeavor. And we discussed it. Beautiful. We do this together. But I walked in and there were some couple gentlemen sitting there talking with him. And he says to me, well, if you want to buy the restaurant, I want another hundred thousand down. Oh, that was like a million dollars to me. Yeah. I mean, mm. I was, I would cut coupons out of the Sunday paper and that's the groceries I would buy. Mm. I mean, and I was like, oh, so I went to the bank to get a loan and they said, sure, little girl, you want to buy a restaurant? You know, I didn't have a credit card. Mm. So they said I had no credit. Mm. I'd always paid my mortgage, but I was a cash girl. I would just write a check. Mm-hmm. So I, I was just heartbroken. Oh my gosh, all these years. Uh, uh, and I just, what's, what's meant to be? What's meant to be? I, I was crushed. I didn't know what to do. I was like, well, it's not meant to be. And I was waiting on uh, one of my favorite couples. I had, I love my customers. Oh, we used to do some fun stuff. I used to have dinners and wine tasting <laughs> and auctions. And, oh, anyway, I love it. Yeah. They, they always love sitting in, in a certain booth. And we were talking, the gentleman was a doctor and he mentioned me buying the restaurant. And I must've got a look on my face. And he said, Paula, what's going on? I said, well, I may not, I may not be buying it. Paula, why? Mm. And I told him, a couple days later, his accountant was knocking on the side door of my restaurant with all the paperwork and that man co-signed a loan for me to buy the restaurant. Wow. Oh my gosh. I love that. I, I was just, just got their the favorite waitress. Oh. I mean, oh my gosh. for my heart. And a year later I got him off the loan. <laughs> Congratulations. But, yes. And our joke was I was going to name the booth after him. <laughs> but, I mean, Aww. it just shows you mm. even at your weakest time. I mean, I was, all these years, all this time I gave up with my kids, all, you know, put to be, to be the owner. I've been the manager all these years. Yeah. Yep. And then that happened. It just shows you, you never know. And there are some awesome people in this world. Oh, there certainly are. It's such a beautiful story. Uh, You know, sometimes people just need a helping hand um, Mm -hmm. at the right time. And I do believe that the right people come into your life at the right time, um, you know, if we're open to it. So, you know, completely different if, you know, you had that that news sorry, you need a, another hundred thousand or you're not going to get the restaurant. That's devastating. You've worked so hard. You had this beautiful vision and a goal. Uh, you know, your, your family was all part of that. And all of a sudden it seems that it's taken away. We can definitely dwell on the, oh my gosh, what's happening. Um, as opposed to, okay, well, what's next move forward, have faith. Something's going to happen, <laughs> lead me to the right path. So fabulous. I love that. And I think that's why it's so important to, to maintain joy and to maintain a happy state, even in those moments where, you know, you want to be miserable <laughs> things are not working out to your advantage. Because I think that if we can recognize that things uh, are always working for us and not against us, it can help ease those situations. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and I really believe if we take a moment every day to think of something we're grateful for, mm. that can set the tone of our whole day. It can be as simple as the meal on my table, especially now in the times that we're going through. I mean, there's so many things that if we could be grateful for that we really don't think about in our everyday of go, go, go. You know, we, we forget to say, hey, I, I have this and this person or I have this.
I have this way. Sometimes we forget to look at those. Yeah, you know, we certainly do. And I think gratitude is a game changer when we can, you know, bring that into our, our daily lives, um, you know, consciously as well. And I can tell you that I'm certainly grateful for having Paula Vale on the Mindset Mentor today and sharing your wealth of knowledge and sharing, you know, your tips and tools on how to find that inner happiness so that we can live a more joyful and fulfilled life. So Paula, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. And I look forward to having you my dear on my show oh what a treat <laughs> that's, your fun. Life. that's gonna be yeah. so much fun elevating your life well i i certainly look forward to the experience paula it's been such yeah. a pleasure and thank you so much for tuning in everyone to the mindset mentor remember to work out your mindset your mindset is like a muscle and we need to work at it. And we know that we go to the gym. We got to work on those abs, those triceps, biceps, right? Well, we <laughs> equally have to work on our mindset. So Paula's given us a great mindset workout for today. And let's uh, continue that and join us next Saturday at 11 a.m. on Saga 960 a.m.